Hi, I'm a profound admirer of America. I like Americans and I love their political system, which has been running for over 200 years now. It is the most democratic, I think, in the world. The way that the power is split between the executive and the legislature, I think is fantastic. It also works on the cycle of elections. They elect a president once every four years. And since the Roosevelt, they restrict the president to two terms. But they elect their House of Representatives once every two years, which means if things start to go wrong, people in the United States have a chance of voting for the other side. And that's crucial because, of course, the American president can, in, can't push laws through or executive actions without the consent of the U.S. Senate, which is elected on two senators per state, so that the big states can't dominate the little states, and also the House of Representatives, which is elected on a population basis uh, per state. And it's elected every two years, and the Senate is elected every six years. So you have, you have this mixture of things that actually restricts the president's power quite considerably. He can only govern with the consent of the Senate and the House. And that is a great thing because the reason we are in the common market now is because Edward Heath was able to ram the European Communities Act through the House of Commons in November 1972 by exploiting his power as Prime Minister that if the Tories didn't do what they wanted he would call an election. Now, in fact, he couldn't actually get it through on a single Tory vote because some of the Tories said, no, 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 we're not having that. You can call your election if you want. You'll not get your bill. And he had to actually eventually call uh, a free vote, which allowed various lickspittle slime like uh, Jenkins to vote this bill through, which has put us into slavery for these last uh, these last 40 years. But the power of the British Prime Minister's patronage, his executive power, is essentially unchecked in this country. And if the House of Lords, which is supposed to be the revising chamber, objects, of course, he has two options. He can either use the Parliament Act and force it through one year later, or he can just collect, uh, create as many uh, life peers as needs be to vote the, uh, the bill through in, in the upper house. So he is really uh, the uncrowned king of this country, and we suffer very badly because of that. So it's very upsetting to hear the Americans say that when we ask for our little crumb of democracy, which is a referendum on the, our membership of the EU, we get told, oh, no, no, you cannot have that. It would be disastrous for the uh, American interests in Europe. Well, I'm sorry, it's not our job to represent American interests in Europe. That's the job of the American ambassador, as I understand it. We get the same thing, of course, from the Norwegian, who happens to also Norwegian foreign minister. He sits conveniently outside Europe and tells us it would be a very bad thing to have a referendum. And then we have the same thing from various other Europhiles. Very, very bad. Well, I don't understand why it's bad to ask for democratic consent of the people. I well remember when Heath was pushing through his common market bill in the 1970s, it started off with questions, I, and the answer was, I will never take us into Europe without the wholehearted consent of the British people. Well, he never had that. And then when he was pushed and pushed, he said, well, that's expressed, the British people express their consent through the House of Commons. So he had his majority in the House of Commons as far as he was concerned. That was wholehearted consent. It's a pity that that is the way uh, our system works. It is not uh, good. It is profoundly uh, undemocratic, but the political elite love it, 
and the European political elite love it even more because if you remember it was the same tactic that was used on the Lisbon Treaty by Blair and then by Brown which pushed it through the House of Commons he signed it and that was it and sod off and there's nothing you can do about it I resent it thank you